Hi there, and welcome to the third part of getting started with data objects. In the first and the second part, of which I will put a link down below in the description, we have built an application that contains a patient data object and a case model that we use to manage our patient data. In this part, we're going to look at what we need to do to link data objects together. And the use case we're going to implement is we are like a doctor's office and we want to keep a record of all the consultations of a certain patient, who it was, when this patient visited our doctor's office and what the advice was that we gave to them. Let's go into our app again, add a model, create a new model and select data object. And let's call this one consultation. I already put this one in my copy paste because I make a lot of typos in this word. Let's create a model. And the first thing that I want to store for a consultation is obviously the patient. So, and this time we're going to select the data object type. And I'm going to reference the patient data object. And from the consultation point of view, there's only going to be one patient linked to it. Some other bits of data is the when timestamp. It's a date with time. So, a summary. That's a string and perhaps a description, which we can use to put in the advice that we give to our patients. Here we go. And like before, we're going to create a service model, a database one, on consultation, data source. Let's store this one in the consultations database table. Called lookup ID, and there we go. Our service model for the consultations. Let's open the database details. And again, we need to map exactly how our columns should be stored. So I'm going to use again a similar pattern as before with a name and an underscore to avoid clashes with keywords in the database. Now what's new here is you can see that the system detected we had a link, a relationship with the patients, and it suggests to create a joint table with a certain name and certain columns. And this table technically behind the scenes will be used whenever we need to join the data together. Now, whether or not we are going to do a join by default is done is, is triggered by this little checkbox. If we leave it checked, it will fetch all the patient data whenever we fetch the consultations. If not, we will need to fetch it ourselves. Let's generate our database change log. We can see consultations table and we can see our join table. All right, that's it from the consultation point of view. And we could be going now, but um, it would be really interesting if we can also fetch the consultations whenever we get our patient data, because that's what we care about. So let's go and look for our patient data object and add a new field called consultations. Let's make it a data object. Now pick the consultation data object. And from the patient point of view, there are multiple consultations linked to it. Save it. And let's have a quick look at the service model. You can see that the system again saw there is a relationship and it suggested the same join table. Um, and if we open up an operation, we can see that we can now actually add uh, query filters that are not only based on the patient fields, but also on the consultations field. So we could search for patients that uh, arrived at a certain time or with a certain disease, with a, with a, with a like. Uh, like this and stuff like that. All right, cancel it and save this. Okay, so we have our data part done. Let's have a way now to gather this data and store our data. Let's uh, search for case model, this. And like before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a user event listener to have a button in global work. And whenever we press it, we're going to add some page. And we want to make this repeatable because we want to store multiple consultations and have a button each time that we press it, uh, have a button each time that we can allow to press it and create a new consultation. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start a process like we had here for the patient update. Yeah. So uh, let's give it a name. And the process is quite simple. Uh, here in the BPMN process, we are going to gather our data. Go. 
And then we're going to create a new data object, our consultation data. Go. All right. So the bits of data that we wanted to uh, gather is quite simple. So I gather form. I already had one, so I'm going to call it two. It's a bit cheating here and not nice, of course. Here we go. And we want to capture basically two things. That's a summary of the consultation. And let's use a multi-line text for our, uh, let's call this one advice. Go. Let's go back to our process. And now in the, uh, in the data object create, we're going to select the consultation. We're going to select, well, it's already selected the create operation. And you can see we need to pass in some data. The patient, uh, we need still need to pass that. I'm going to map the patient data object variable into my process. So I'm going to call this one patient. Copy paste it. Don't make a mistake here. The uh, timestamp. I'm going to cheat again and have a look here. This is was one with time. So I'm going to do this one here. This one has a time. So, and the summary is a summary from our um, form. And the description was the advice. I okay, this should create our, uh, our consultation data object, link it to the patient data. We also need to make this one repeatable. And we had to pass in our patient data object into the process, otherwise I couldn't reference it. All right, that should be it. Um, of course, I can't yet see this. So one of the things I want to also do is show this on the screen. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to open up my uh, work form. There it is, go throw it here. Here we go, the work form. And in the work form, I want to or, or show the uh, consultations. There we go. But I got a bit of a problem now. I don't have a way to fetch the consultations for a certain patient. So I need to do that now. So let's search for the service, the consultation service. And I'm going to add a new operation here, which is find consultations by patient. Oh, it's a, it's a search operation. And the filter parameter here is the patient ID. Every patient is um, uniquely identified by a identifier. It's a string. And I'm going to add a filter here. And I'm going to now select the patient ID should equals whatever we pause in here. OK, that's it. And maybe, well, I want to sort this one on the time and show the newest ones at the top. Go add an operation, let's save everything. Go back to our work form, and we now can link it to the uh, operation we just created, which is defined consultation by patients. And I need to map it to uh, the patient that we need to map it to a value. Now we're in the front end now because this data table is going to be shown in the front end, so we need to use a front end expression, which is patient dot ID. That's it. So we're going to use the patient that we have available and Pass the ID into the operation, which is going to fetch the consultations for us. Okay, and the last thing we need to do now is we need to show the information. And I want to show the summary here and perhaps the timestamp. Show the timestamp first. Here we go. And this one. When. Cool. That should be it. Um, yeah, let's have a go at it. Let's publish this. Go to uh, from a control because obviously we haven't yet created our uh, schema. So let's go into the second deployment here. Schema definitions. We now need to create the database tables for the second liquid base change log. Update database. Go. Go now to work. Patient case. and add a consultation. That starts a new BPMN process instance. First thing is we need to fill in the data. So let's say, for example, this patient had a headache. The advice was um, gave him some pill. Let's complete it. And if I now go to the work form, 
you can see that our data table with the consultation shows that we had one um, uh, consultation going on here. Now, one of the things that I forgot to do is I forgot to add the description. So let's do this. So let's add a view form to data table. So view consultation. Yeah. And it generated for us already, based on our data object structure, a form. But I don't like the fact that this one is a text field. So I'm going to switch this one to a multi-line field with the same binding. Remove this one. There you go. I'm going to publish this. And I'm going to use a cool feature of Flowable in Flowable Inspect that when I uh, refresh, I can see there's now a migrate button to migrate this to the latest version that I've deployed. Click it. It's going to refresh. And you can see that now we have the ability to view it. It migrated to our latest definition of our case. And we actually now have the latest work form definition also going on. So if we now click on this. We can see that we have yeah, the entry of our consultation. And we can add more consultations here. For example, uh, say uh, a runny nose um, gave him some antibiotics, scheduled call, a week check. Go. And if I now go to my work form, there should be two entries. The runny nose one, which is the latest one, is at the top because we sorted uh, on the timestamp. And yeah, that's it. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. We are now in part three already. We created a patient data object. We created the CMN model, which we use the data object tasks, which you can also use in BPMN. And in this movie, we uh, created uh, links between a data, our patient data object and our consultation. Stay tuned for more and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.